Hello and welcome to this very special Lightboard training video. I'm Isaiah, your host, and today I want to talk about something that for academics, for us as academic PhDs, leaving or trying to leave academia for industry, it can be hard to understand the shift in mindset and social norms that we have to make if we want to move from, right, academia to industry, right? So academia has its own values, it has its own mindset. For example, and this is something that I've been talking a lot about, right? As academics, we're taught to be very suspicious. This is good if you're being suspicious of data and information, right? Because you're avoiding confirmation bias. But that crosses over into us being suspicious of other people or being paranoid that other people are going to be suspicious of us and our, our ulterior motives, right? Like I talk to a lot of PhDs and they say, well, I don't want to reach out to somebody and be nice to them and ask them questions about them and their career because they're going to know what I'm doing. Oh, they're going to know that you're showing an interest in them. They're going to know what you're doing if you're f obviously faking it and if you can't bring yourself to care about the other person. Um, but if they know that you're taking an interest in them because you want to exchange value, that's fine. Okay, an exchange of value is an industry social norm. And it's based on these industry values here. I'm going to go through these, right? An industry value, reach out. That's an industry value. If you reach out consistently to people, that's valued. That's impressive in industry. You follow up multiple times just to get one response from somebody. That's not crazy or stalkerish or suspicious. That's industry approved. It's a value. Showing interest for something. Sometimes as PhDs, we think if we show interest or emotion towards something, this makes us look inferior or weak or illogical or stupid. It's not the case. You got to be interested. You got to show interest in the other person, right? And other people. Enthusiasm. I used to try to water this down by saying engagement. Look, if you can't be enthusiastic about the role that you want to get into or about industry or about other people, get out of here. You're never going to get hired in industry. Okay. What do you think the hiring managers are going to think? You're not even enthusiastic on day one. What do they think you're going to be like six months from now? Most of you, you're hearing stuff like you're overqualified, underqualified, you can't do the coding exam, you need a visa, et cetera, when the real reason is you're not, enthousi you're not enthusiastic. Okay, you're not following the social norms of industry. You, maybe you're awkward or coming across as arrogant or standoffish. You're posturing too much. If you just be enthusiastic about the role in the company and say, this company's my top choice, build a case. This company is my top choice for XYZ reasons. It'll overcome a lot of your problems. And then finally, acting as if. Why don't you act as if you're working for the company already? I know in academia, we're like, act as if, unless I'm an expert and five other, you know, five of my peers Reviewers tell me that I'm an expert. I can't even say I'm an expert. I can't even try to help. I, I don't want to, you know, uh, cross a line. I don't want to show, you know, I don't want to be overconfident. This is a mistake. I mean, you should start acting like you're working for the company right away. You should talk to as many people at the, as the company as possible and share things with them. Uh, show interest in what they're working on. You don't have to dive deeply into anything they're doing proprietary, but you should act like you're ready to work for them right now. Okay, go, go to a conference where they're at and spend the entire time, as much time as you can with them at the vendor show. See what they're doing. Help pick up a stack of papers for them. This might seem crazy to you, but I'm trying to help you understand the social norms of industry. They're not suspicious, right? If, you know, I'll give you another example. In academia, very often, we think that we're doing other people a favor by being direct, right? So we think, we think okay, be direct and selfish, we don't call it selfish, but really it is selfish. If you start talking about yourself and what you want under the guise of, oh, I'm not playing games, I'm just being direct. I'm coming to this person right away on LinkedIn and saying, I want a job. That's selfish, right? You're not doing them a favor. You're not showing interest in them first, not asking about them, their career first, not congratulating them for anything, not asking for advice or opinion or adding a value in any way. That's actually selfish. That's, that's not you being direct, okay? Uh, so that's one academic social norm, right? And then I already talked about this one being suspicious <laughs> all the time. So you can't do that. So, so I want to talk about uh, reach out number one. On LinkedIn, you know how many people you can reach out to per day as long as your ratio of those that connect back to you doesn't get too out of whack? You can reach out to 50, okay? 50 connections per day. 50! I bet that changes your threshold a little bit. Why, why is this 50? Because that's a social norm in industry. This is normal. As long as you get 10 or more of these connections connecting back with you, back to you, you should be able to continue to connecting at that level, 50 people every single day. So if you're sending specific messages to the people you're reaching out to, 
you can connect at this level every day. What are you doing currently? If you actually had to count how many people you've connected to and sent a message to when you connected, two, three people per day, five, like I usually hear like at the high, highest level of PhDs that I talk to before we work with them in our program, like five. Okay, there's tenfold a, a greater number if you start following the social norms of reach out. For follow-up, I talked to a lot of PhDs who said, well, I, I, I reached out to four people at this company. And I'm like, well, how many people work at that company? Oh, it's a larger company, so like 40,000. Okay, so you've reached out to four, right, out of 40,000. Why did you stop at four? If I'm trying to get hired at a company, I'm reaching out to like 10, 20 of these 50, if not all 50 at the same company. It's just a numbers game. Reach out, send specific messages to every single one of them. Spend nothing but an hour reaching out to people at that company. Gatekeepers, decision makers, people are that are in the proximal position. You want, you want to do things that in academia, right? They would say, you are crazy. Okay, you can't see that, but I wrote crazy. <laughs> you, you wanna do things where other academics would say you're crazy. When you're doing that, okay, in the terms of these values, that's when you're doing it right in industry. In academia, reaching out to 50 people in a day, crazy. Totally normal in industry. Okay, following up with uh, uh, hundreds of people or reaching out to hundreds of people, following up with them every three or four days, adding value, not doing anything passive aggressive, like just seeing if you saw my last message, but following up, building those relationships, dozens and dozens and dozens at a time at a single company, crazy in academia, normal in industry. You're trying to get hired there. You want to get on the radar of everybody you can at that company. You want other academics to think this person is insane. They are absolutely crazy. They're doing way too much in their job search. They're coming on way too strong. That's the academic social norm, not the industry social norm. Okay? Follow up. That is seen as highly valuable. It's a highly valuable transferable skill. Okay? Uh, interest. You got to show interest in the other person, a deep interest. You can't fake this. People can smell, right, that kind of BS in messages or your attitude a mile away. So you actually have to be interested in them. The, I mean, these people you're reaching out to, you, sh you, sh you should be interested. They got into the careers that you want to get into. They got into industry, which is where you're trying to go. So show extreme interest. And that goes hand in hand with showing enthusiasm. Quit dialing it down. Nobody wants to hire the cool kid, okay, that thinks that they're too cool to act excited about the job or the role. That's just a screen for your own fear of getting rejected. You gotta be enthusiastic. For every one person you lose by being too enthusiastic, you're gonna lose 99 by not being enthusiastic enough. And then finally, you gotta act as if. Okay, what does this mean? I mean, how could you, right, how, how could you work for them now? How could you work for them now? What could you do? What could you gather for them? Any little detail that they give you, anything that they're working on, right? Find out information about it. Ask what you could do. Try to get around people in person who are working at that company. Reach out to as many of them as you can and see what they're working on. Send them an article. Send them some sort of information that you found. Don't try to act like you know everything, but in any way, if you can make things easier on them, right? In terms of even just the way they reply to your initial messages. You ask about them, what they're working on, what they're doing instead of about yourself or help right away. That can be helpful. All right. So hopefully this helps you reframe things a little bit. Stop thinking like an academic. Stop following the academic social norms of what is normal. Stop being suspicious, direct and selfish. Start following these industry values and you will get hired on your timeline into industry. This takes us to the end of this Lightboard training video. As always, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.